And they said, yeah, here's our recycle bin. There are 38 million objects in this customer's recycle bin. The slow recycle bin. Let's talk about the slow recycle bin. This is the question that came in. We never disabled the recycle bin feature on our database because by default it comes, the recycle bin comes, becomes activated. And since we originally built the system with lots of free space, over the years our recycle bin has grown and purged DBA recycle bin seems to hang. How can we reclaim the space? There's a lot going on there, a lot to unpack. So let's dig into a few parts of that statement. Then we'll do a demo to see what's going on. In fact, we won't do a demo because when I was exploring doing a live demo with this late earlier this afternoon, it took so long uh, that I thought I won't subject, subject that to you. So I'll, I'll just put some screenshots in the, of the demo that we did. This is what I would normally say to a question something like this. When someone says, I've got stuff in my recycle bin, how do I get rid of it, etc.?" I simply say, it's not an issue. The reason I say it's not an issue is in the same way is the recycle bin on your PC typically is not an issue or your Mac in the sense that you pretty much ignore it until the machine comes to you and says, you know, things are getting a bit tight on space. Therefore, you should consider cleaning up this antiquated stuff that's sitting in your trash can or your recycle bin. The reason it's especially not an issue in Oracle is because we don't even ask you. And, and let's explore what goes on. Here's a table space, a schematic of a table space. That's the large box here. And here's table T1 that's got some data in it. Over time, we'll create table T2 and then we'll create table T3. And the recycle bin concept is very simple. It's the same way as what happens on your PC. All we do is we hide the file or hide the table and give it a special name. So when you drop table T2, it's still there. It, nothing gets changed. It simply gets renamed to bin dollar, some big long hash string. And it gets flagged such that it doesn't appear in your typical queries of DBA tables, DBA segments, et cetera, et cetera. We simply leave it there because if, when someone comes and creates the next table, T4, we'll simply use the free space in the table space and so forth, T5, et cetera. And this is why the table space will fill up over time, but you won't get an error. You won't get this thing on your PC saying, oh, we have insufficient space. If I go create table T6, that's what happens. We simply silently throw away the oldest recycle bin object and put it, a real segment in its place. We're never going to either give you an error saying the table space is full and we're never going to auto extend. I did a test that earlier today to see would a table space auto extend to hang on to a recycle bin object and the answer is no. So there isn't really any issues with having a very a lot of objects in your recycle bin because the database will simply throw them away under space pressure as you create more and more stuff on there. And when you look at things like DBA free space, it caters for these things. Often the alarm bells that ring when people say, oh, my table space is full, is often perhaps due to an antiquated free space script, which is perhaps taking into account the segments where they're actually in the recycle bin itself. In general, recycle bin objects are just a non-issue. They will effectively age out under, under their own volition. However, in this case, I had to walk back my it's not an issue statement and say it actually is an issue. Let me explain why it was an issue for this particular person. They said, you know, I've been doing this purge. It's been running for hours. And I said, that's really strange. I said, well, what have you got? And they said, yeah, here's our recycle bin. There are 38 million objects in this customer's recycle bin. That is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It absolutely blew my mind. That means over the time of this person's database, they have dropped 38 million objects. I've, I don't know many databases that have ever had 38 million objects, maybe a million objects. I, I can't think of any, but obviously in this case, 38 million objects in their recycle bin. The reality is cleanup is expensive when you get to those kind of scales. This is what I did to actually test out, you know, to explore what happens when we actually do a purge recycle bin. I simply picked up a table, table space of mine called large table space. And it, I think it was um, eight gig in size. And all I did was I knew that each extent we create by default in a table, in a system locally managed table space is 64K. 
So I could simply take the number of bytes in my table space divided by 64K, and that's how many tables I can create and drop and, and have the table space full of recycle bin objects. And I simply did create table segment creation immediate. So I definitely got one extent at least and then dropped the table straight away. I ended up with 130,000 tables called T that are simply 131,000 you know, versions of the table called T all now in the recycle bin and absolutely nothing else in the table space. So the table space is actually full of recycle bin objects. And then I thought, okay, I'm not gonna take this demo out to a 38 million, 131,000 is fine. Even that took about five minutes to actually run that script to create them. And then I said, let's purge the recycle bin. It took 26 minutes. That's a long time. It's only 100, 131,000 rows in that table. So obviously something's going on. And as I mentioned, cleanup is an expensive part of purging the recycle bin. I turned to trace on to see what was going on. And this is what you see down the bottom of the trace file. Even though it's 131,000 objects that are being reclaimed, the actual number of statements being issued by the database, you can see was, was it 4.2 million executions of recursive SQL. And you can see that's where all that time was burnt. It's, it's expensive, like it's CPU bound, 1,271 seconds of CPU out of the 1,500 seconds elapsed time. The reason it's so heavy CPU is all these recursive queries are going to be dictionary style queries. And almost all those dictionary tables are always going to be in memory in the dictionary case. So it's very much just logical IO cranking away. But you can see a whole lot of stuff goes on when you purge your recycle bin. Let's have a look at some of the solutions that we can consider before we actually look a bit further. The first and most obvious one is, well, if you're thinking you might get into this kind of you know, mess, you could simply turn your recycle bin off. By default, it's turned on when you create a database. I'm not a fan of this because with the exception of this niche case with 38 million objects, as I said, recycle bins are generally not an issue. And the best thing is, you know, they can really save your neck if you drop the wrong table or drop the wrong object. Having that nice safety net, I think, is, is well worth uh, having a recycle bin. One of the things I explored was, well, if it takes 26 minutes to run a purge DBA recycle bin, is, is there any way of parallelizing this? And if you'd simply turn on parallel DML, parallel DDL, you don't really get any benefit because it really, it's 131,000 discrete operations and each one does a whole lot of dictionary queries. It's not like this is a single big batch parallel operation. When I actually looked at that trace file in more detail, all the purge is doing is doing what you would do if you were doing it manually. Here are you know, the first eight statements I just grepped out of the trace file that I traced to capture that, that three and a half million executions. All we're doing is, is explicitly running drop table purge in the same way that we would run drop table purge to drop a table without it going into the recycle bin anyway. All it's really doing is saying, take these tables, which are now called bin dollar and just do a drop table purge. As you know, when you do drop table, a whole lot of stuff goes on inside the dictionary. You have to clean up tab dollars, the internal, you know, end dollars, con dollars, you know, column dollars. That's where all that recursive SQL is coming from, cleaning up the data dictionary. There were simply 130,000 of those you know, drop table commands just sitting in my trace file. So rather than do a single purge DBA recycle bin, I thought what I could do is I could create a table called to be purged, which is simply the owner and object name from DBA recycle bin. I'm being a bit, you know, fast and loose here. Normally I would say, okay, we're type equals table, etc. There would be a little bit more criteria here, but in this case, I know it's only 131,000 explicit table objects and nothing else. And I could assign a simple modulo sequence. So in this case, Every row is going to have zero, one, two, or three as a modulo value for that sequence column. And then I could simply in four discrete sessions, loop through my table for the particular sequence number. So this session would run it for X equals zero, fire up another session, run it for X equals one, another one for X equals two, another one for X equals three. Four concurrent sessions, each one doing explicit purges effectively from the recycle bin on an object by object basis rather than doing purge DBA recycle bin. And I ran this and you get some benefits, like it went from 26 minutes down to 18 minutes for each of the four. But it does say that that does prove it's not linear or didn't become one quarter as fast in each of these little worker threads. Even though we can get some benefits, one would imagine there's a lot of contention going on here because 
you know, generally we don't like a lot of people dropping objects at the same time or doing any kind of DDL at the same time. DDL is one of the less scalable things in the Oracle database, which is why we try to steer clear of it. But you can see we got some benefit. What's that? About 25% benefit. But what that tells me on my machine, and my machine's a reasonable spec, I could probably clean up about 400,000 recycle bin objects per hour. What does that mean for someone with 38 million objects in their recycle bin? It's around about 90 hours to clean up a whole lot. Or what's that? About four days. So be aware that once you get down into this 38 million kind of category, it doesn't matter what you do, you're in for a very, very expensive time cleaning up all that mess. One of the things I would consider doing, and I've recommended to this customer is, if, if you're prepared to wait that, that 90 hours, then fine. Be aware your server's gonna be running hot while you do this as well. You, know, you might wanna actually sped it out even more. If most of the stuff in a particular table space is actually recycled in objects, and there's actually not much real segments left, it might be better to actually move those existing segments to a new table space and then just drop the old table space. Rather than having to purge out each object, you would simply say drop including contents. Still going to be very, very busy because in the same way of dropping those tables individually, you're still doing a big dictionary cleanup. Um, I didn't test this, but I would imagine that would be slightly more efficient. What it does do is then have, you know, effectively the new table space doesn't have all this pollution in it. If you can finally get to a point where your recycle bin has been purged, there's got to be something going on here for you to get 38 million objects in your recycle bin. Longer term, you would want to clean up that mess and then have a regular job that simply says, okay, let's go. For example, you get to keep your recycle bin objects for say 24 hours. And you can do that because one of the things in DBA recycle bin is the drop time column. And that'll effectively, you can simply say, let's get all the stuff that was dropped more than say 24 hours ago and purge them out manually. And that way you'll never get to this point again, where you've got so many millions of objects floating around in there. One of the things that does worry me, and I haven't quizzed this customer further on this, is no matter what they do, once you've got to this point where you had 38 million objects in your database, I'm a little bit concerned about the ongoing pain that they may suffer. And this is one of the things that it's, you know, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to resolve this. If you look at what is the indexes are on the internal table that sits underneath DBA recycle bin, there's an index on object ID, an index on owner, index on table space. And this makes sense because if you look at the docs for the purge command, you can purge a single object, you can purge for a particular user, or you can purge for a table space. So you can see why these indexes probably make sense. If I do purge table space, you know, my table space name, it would come in on that table space index to identify all the objects that need to be purged. One thing that's not that though, is the drop time. As I mentioned earlier, when recycle bins are normally not an issue, as space needs to be reclaimed, I come create a new table, it simply says, I haven't got space, let's throw away the oldest recycle bin object. It has to find the oldest object to throw away. If I've got 38 million rows in there and no index on when the object was dropped, the act of actually allocating extent or creating a new table in that table space could potentially be very, very expensive due to having to scan the recycle bin for 38 million rows to find which one to throw away. You don't want to be getting to that point where you've got 38 million objects in there because I think there's going to be some ongoing impacts. If you do get things like you know, issues with creating new segments or extents and they become very, very slow, I think probably your only workaround would be to create a brand new table space and start allocating your stuff in there and just not touch this one that used to have so many objects in it because it, it almost becomes like a noose around your neck. You might want to consider, okay, yep, that table space, it's just a giant mess. Let's just leave it and put stuff in a new table space because there'll be nothing in the recycle bin for it to ever be dropped out. The thing that does concern me is with any piece of software, Oracle Database included, uh, there's an old saying which is like, you don't want to be a pioneer. You don't want to be the first person to ever come up with a particular set of circumstances because the likelihood of it being encountered by lots of other customers is low. The likelihood of it being as rigorously tested because it's such a niche you know, circumstance is also low. For example, if you have 38 million objects in your recycle bin, it means at some stage, or in fact, currently you have 38 million rows in a lot of the dictionary tables, sister obstola, which sits underneath DBA objects. 
sys.tab dollar sits underneath DBA table, sys.seg dollar, DBA segments. If there's very few people on the planet who have over, say, half a million rows in these tables, if you've got 38 million rows, you're going to be the one that encounters those very strange boundary cases that have slipped through our extensive testing for the Oracle database kernel. Because I'm pretty confident that when we're building testing, we're not going, hey, what if there was tens of millions of rows in the recycle bin? Because we're not expecting that to ever happen. It's much better to avoid getting into these circumstances rather than having to clean, them, clean yourself out of them. One of the things that could be causing this, I think, and some, this wasn't my idea. Someone mentioned this to me on Twitter when I said, wow, look at how many rows in this DBA cycle. And they said, I'll bet it's continuous integration, continuous deployment, because you roll out a whole sequence of scripts to create your objects, do unit tests, blow it all away, roll it in, blow it away, roll it in, blow it away. So if you are doing that, you probably need to be aware that you might want to add in some recycle bin purging as part of that cleanup facility, or Worst case scenario, turn the recycle bin off for these things because typically, you know, if you're doing CI/CD, it'll probably be in a non-production database, and therefore the desire to recover something that got accidentally dropped is much much lower. So just some things to be aware of. We've got a, a long road ahead helping this customer with their 38 million uh, recycle bin objects because uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen down the track, even once we've cleaned up their mess. So try to steer clear of that. G'day, Connor here. Just wanted to say thank you for watching the video. I appreciate the fact that you chose to watch a tech video instead of being out in the beautiful weather and the beautiful sunshine. I'm very flattered by that choice. Make sure you subscribe by clicking up here or watch another video straight away just down here. Either way, hopefully I'll see you on the next tech video. Bye for now.